Hey, I'm Rhea, and in this video I will be discussing an overarching theme of chapters 1 through 8, aka part 1, of The American Pageant by David M. Kennedy and Elizabeth Cohen. So in addition to that, I will be giving my own thoughts and insights um, and kind of discussing the way they've affected my life a little bit. One theme that is especially prevalent throughout all of history is conflict. So this is especially true of American history, as it involves the clashing of cultures, of ways of life, of religion, of ideology, and so forth. So with that idea in mind, we'll turn to a more specific theme that kind of goes throughout the first eight chapters. And it's actually more so of a question, and it is, do the ends justify the means? So some examples of that would be, is the poor treatment and annihilation of the Native Americans by the Europeans justified by the society that it ended up producing? Um, or is uh, the emergence of brutal slavery in colonial America justified by the economy, the thriving economy that it produced? Were the Salem witch trials a necessary portrayal of the widening social stratification in which their later criticism discouraged the dangerously rational use to find a scapegoat for social resentments? My initial answer to these questions is no. Because if you don't have a clear idea of what the ends are before proceeding, it's very difficult to engage in actions that will justify them beforehand. In addition, I feel that many of these events um, and the people who kind of perpetrated these events were people who had a superior sense about themselves. Now, I bring up this theme about the ends and the means and superiority, not only because it's interesting and it's controversial and it evokes a lot of thought, but also to make a comparison. See, conflict, on the other hand, on its most basic level, does not involve any kind of conscious sense of superiority. It concerns difference, and as said in the beginning, it concerns many, many different kinds of difference. Differing cultural practices, such as the Native Americans' desire to preserve nature and the Europeans' desire to utilize it. Um, different different uh, religious ideals, such as Protestantism and kind of a lot of its oppositions to Catholicism, um, and many other different kinds of differences. And in that way, conflict, unlike the imposition of superiority, is natural. And I would go as far as to say that although people do not like conflict a lot of times, not only is it natural, but it's necessary and progressive. So why is this? Um, so this is because conflict, to be resolved, requires some kind of point of reckoning, some level of understanding, and more times than not, compromise. So to create the Declaration of Independence required great compromise, to fight side by side as Underdogs in the Revolutionary War required compromise, and one of the greatest instances of compromise in American history, the United States Constitution, is sometimes referred to as a bundle of compromise. So that document in specific represents compromises made between big and small states, states with many slaves and states with few, um, states with people who favored strong government and people who favored weaker government, and, you know, the fact that that has lasted 230 years almost is a testament to the endurance of that specific compromise. And as a result of looking at these things in American history, we conclude that conflict, which inspires understanding and compromise, is progress. And if you shy away from it, you cannot evolve or accurately represent the feelings or ideas of the people comprised in a nation. And I think that that is arguably the most important and noteworthy part of America, is our ability to understand and attempt not to suppress, but rather face conflict and allow it to drive us forward. So thank you for watching this video about conflict, its separation from superiority, and its place throughout the beginning of American history. I hope you've enjoyed.